Last week, we revealed that the police were investigating whether a UKIP candidate in the forthcoming European elections committed an offence when he said this about the Labour MP Jess Phillips in a video now taken down by YouTube. There's been an awful lot of talk about whether I would or would not even rape Jess Phillips. I've been in a lot of trouble for my hardline stance of not even raping her. I suppose with enough pressure, I might cave. But let's be honest, nobody's got that much beer. The Labour MP told us about the impact that those comments had on her. I've been putting a brave face on it and pretending that it was all fine and that I could cope. And it sort of dawned on me that for four years, essentially, this man has made a career out of harassing me. And I felt harassed. I felt, I felt like, how can somebody say that they would rape me if forced and be a legitimate candidate in an election? The video was made by Carl Benjamin, who's standing as a UKIP candidate for the South West in next week's European parliamentary elections. We asked him onto our programme to respond to the interview Jess Phillips gave us. Ahead of those elections, you might remember, earlier this week, we invited all the parties fielding candidates, Conservatives, UKIP, Labour, the Lib Dems, the Brexit Party, SNP, Plaid Cymru, Change UK and the Green Party onto the show to discuss their policies, which they did. This interview with Mr Benjamin is not about UKIP policies. Thank you very much for talking to us. Um, we invited you on after we interviewed, as you know, the Labour MP Jess Phillips last week. I want to ask you, why did you decide to choose rape when talking about Jess Phillips? I'm interested in why you're deliberately misrepresenting what's happened. Have you seen the video in question? Of course, yes. Right, and how, how would you describe that video? Why did you decide to choose well, no, no, rape it's, it's when talking It's very important about because you've been lying about me and I've been attacked in the street because of your lies. So this is, this is genuinely I've, I've important. I've never lied about you, and you're you, here you today. To a lie by omission is still a lie, and in your last segment about me with Jess Phillips, you did not mention that this was a comedy video. Talk us through that thought process. Why rape? It's a joke at your expense. Well, you could have chosen any number of things. I did. And if you could politics, describe the video, it was a four minute blue politics, for real video of comedy. A feminist approach, but you chose rape, and I'm really interested to find out why. It's honestly part of a long meta joke about the way that the media is bullying Jess Phillips with jokes I made that she never saw. Why rape though? I've just explained it to you. It's a joke about you. It's not a joke about her. Why did you choose that subject with because all the violence and intimidation? That's the subject that Jess Phillips brings the degradation up. that that involves. Jess Phillips brings this up all the time. I mean, do you know the context of the original tweet that, again, she didn't see you guys put in her face? Do you know that? Of course. From what that? kind of an individual makes light of sexual violence and attaches a woman's name to it? Again, someone who's telling a joke, but this is the point I'm trying to make. You are misrepresenting what has happened. You an individual, are leaving... an individual that might end up, if elected, representing victims of rape in the southwest region of the country. Yes, and I spoke to a victim of rape very recently and in one of the street interviews that I've been doing she thanked me for being able to take the power back from such a terrible experience by owning it herself and being able to make jokes about the subject. It doesn't control her. And this is the thing that I'm very concerned about. Like Jess Phillips said, this was some kind of coercive control. Well, not by me. She hasn't seen the video. She didn't even see the original tweet. Jess Phillips says it's harassment. Yeah, but, but yeah, by she journalists. Told us you are harassing her. By journalists. She feels she harassed by see, what you have she said. She didn't see anything that I said. It's journalists like you who put that in front of her face. You're the ones coercively controlling her by making sure she can't get away from it. Mm. I've never sent any of that to Jess Phillips. You had to find it. This is tabloid journalism that you have found and put in her face to outrage her. YouTube have taken down your video. Um, West Midlands Police are investigating mm. to see if an offence has taken place. Could I ask you a really personal question? Sure. Have you been raped? I've been sexually assaulted. Is that the first time you've... Do you usually this? ask people if they've been raped? Do you find that an appropriate question? I appreciate it's a sensitive question and but a really this is the thing, you assume question. that I haven't. You assume that I had no understanding I, I, I had decision. no idea. I don't think you'd ask a woman if she'd been raped. I have, right. several times. Really, in this context. Um, but the, let's, so I, let's the, the, and the reason I'm asking that question, obviously, is, is to see if you understand the impact that your rape discourse has on those there is no been rape victims of sexual violence. Do you realise the impact that actually, this rape discourse has on those who've been the victims of sexual violence? I don't think you get to speak for victims. 
I've been talking to victims. Yeah, but you don't get to, to speak for them. I'm not speaking for them. I'm going to tell you what they've said to us. I, I can, I've told you, you what victims have said to me. Let me read you what survivors have told us. Well, there, is, there, is no, there is no one narrative here. Are you interested have, in hearing no, what they've said? No, because you're not interested in hearing what they say to me. Let me read you what survivors have told us. These are direct quotes from people who either watch your video or have read your comments. Mm -hmm. Honestly, this makes my stomach churn. How does he find this acceptable? Comments like this may not seem a lot to a bloke like him, but to me, jokes about what I went through feel like a bullet. That's from a 31-year-old male survivor of mm -hmm. sexual violence in Northampton. And from a mid-twenties female survivor, she thanked me for How making jokes like How do you respond like to that? I respond to that by saying, you've been, mis you've been lied to. You are misrepresenting what's happening. This man you are misrepresenting watched, what's happening. This man has watched your video, he's read your comments. I don't How do you has. respond to what he says? And the way that you report the comments is farcical. I'll read you another one. The lack of empathy here from someone seeking public office is sickening. Rape is not funny. As a survivor, I'm angry. There are two sides to every question, I and I am empathising with the other side. May I finish, please? As a survivor, I'm angry because it's comments like this that would have prevented me telling anyone what happened to me, and I probably wouldn't be here today without that help. That's from a female survivor, age 28, from London. But you don't care about the survivor that talked to me. You only care about the survivors that bolster your narrative. Those survivors who are on my side on this issue, you ignore completely. You pretend they don't exist. You said you've spoken to one person. In one town. I've spoken to other people in other towns in the Southwest tour that I'm doing. And they're all survivors of rape. Of, or of sexual rape. assault, yes. Rape crisis, the charity say. Can I, can I ask? Hang on, look, look, look. Right. I know I, what I'm you're, No, 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 no. I know. This is what I know, rape but, crisis say. But you're not getting to the core of the issue. Rape this crisis, is very surface level interrogation. Rape crisis say this. Experiences of rape and sexual violence and abuse are much more common than most people realise. Material that normalises, trivialises or attempts to get laughs out of sexual violence can be humiliating and upsetting for survivors. So-called rape jokes are just not, are not just insensitive, hurtful and disrespectful. They are damaging. Yes, I'm, I'm aware, no, I'm aware of the politically correct narrative around this, but there is another narrative that I suppose we can call the non-politically correct one that I support. I think it's a, a lot more empowering not to be controlled by jokes. I think that owning jokes and laughing I'm at them as, as a you, point... Why I'm are you interrupting that you, me? Why I'm are you inter interrupting me now? Come on. I'm interested that you won't accept that survivors of rape and sexual violence find what you've done to be incredibly hurtful. And you won't accept that survivors of sexual violence find what I've done empowering. You've spoken to one person No, I've spoken to lots to of people. That's just the one example that I'm giving you right now. Why do you think you've had kippers and milkshakes thrown over you while campaigning? Because you're radicalising people by lying about me. So there is a link, you say, between language and acts of violence? There is a link between telling lies about someone in the press, and you don't seem to have any duty of care over this at all, and the things that they're trying to do, because they don't know so what I So there is a link sample. between language, between the, rhetoric they, and acts of violence? Yes, but you're not telling jokes. Are you telling so jokes? it follows then that there is a link between your rape language and potential acts of violence? No, because I was telling a joke. It was right. very clearly contextually a joke. This is why you have to decontextualise it in order for you, what you're saying to make sense. You sound like a hypocrite. I don't care, it's a joke. Because when like, who you're, isn't a hypocrite? When you're the target, you blame the words on newspapers or the media. But when you target someone by attaching their name to your rape joke, that's okay. Yeah, but I'm not inciting people. You are inciting people. You're normalising. Every, every single person I've spoken to about the things that you have said about me don't understand any of it. And if You're I just sit there and interrogate the people who are alleging things about me, I can just sit there and explain to them the context and they go, well, that's not very important, is it? You're normalising this kind of language. Here are some I, I'm normalising your... comedy because at this point comedy is under attack in this country. Here is I mean, I'm being investigated for a joke. Pages. I can name other comedians who are being investigated for jokes. We have gone down a very dark path. As, the, as Orwell says, printed on the front of this building, if liberty is to mean anything at all, it must mean the right to tell people that which they don't want to hear. Do Here you stand by that or not? This is the BBC. Does the BBC stand by that or not? Here are some comments from your social I'll media pages no. after your video. Uh, Romy Tobinson. Well, she wants some action. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not accounting for what other people have said. I'm only going to be accountable for what I've said. I'm sorry. No, no, that's this is normalising. Would you like some discourse. of the things that people have said to me because of w watching your program? 
Romy Tobinson says in response to your video, well, she wants some action. I've had a chat with a brewery and they'll find the beer. I've ordered a paper bag. I think you will need it. You will have to buckle down and think of England. I am not AN says, honest question here, mate. Would you rape Jess Phillips? Trevor I don't Cedis. believe that these are real. Tre they are. Proof to me. Trevor Cedis. Why, 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 Jess to, wants why are you action making now? Up comments that other people have apparently said? Jess wants action now. Rapey action, I'll wager. You are normalising this kind of language. You, I'm normalising jokes, yes. Your deputy... I want comedy to come back to this country. Your, because the BBC is doing everything they can to kill it off. Your deputy leader, uh, Mike Hookham, says, rape destroys the lives of the men and women who suffer it. It's mm. not something that should ever be satirised or joked about. It's certainly not in my concept of free speech. Then you've condemned every comedian I'd in this like country. To, this is your deputy leader, Mike Yeah, but Hookham. he's condemning every comedian in this I would like to see those wrong. involved drop the pretense, take responsibility, which comes with free speech, and admit they were wrong. I don't think telling jokes is wrong. I don't think jokes should be criminalised. I'm being investigated over a joke, over a video that was marked comedy, it was an outtake of blooper reels that you're lying about. There are other comedians in my position where they're being lied about by the media, they drum up this kind of tabloid hysteria, and then the police have to investigate. Do, do you know who Harry why Miller is, is? Why is you keep tanking in the polls ahead of these Euro elections? Well, how the polls? How reliable are they? Did they predict Brexit? Did they predict Trump? I've been on the ground and we're getting a very good response. At the last Euro elections, UKIP won 24 seats. They got 27% of the mm. vote. UKIP today are currently polling at about 3%. Brexit Party polling on average 30%. What would represent success for UKIP in these Euro elections? Honestly, for me, I'm not going to speak for UKIP as a whole, but for me, being able to table these issues around free speech is the most important thing. I'm a free speech activist. We, we are losing our ability to make jokes in this country. What about? Because of puritanical moral standards. So in terms of across the country representing from Westminster. success, is it, is it getting one MEP or well, we don't five? Know. Or? We don't know how many we're going to get because polls are very rarely accurate. What would represent success for you? Well, I mean, obviously MEP elections, but even then, is, is the, the, the European elections, these are being wildly overblown in importance. For example, like everyone's you know, talking about uh, Farage uh, and his polling. Well. If Farage could have achieved Brexit as an MEP, he would have done this 20 years ago. This is all smoke and mirrors. The Brexit party is not going to last. It's a big stunt. A they can't put out a manifesto that's going to satisfy George Galloway and Anne Whittacombe. There a is no way. A petition has been started, which now has 81,000 signatures, calling for a lifetime ban on standing for elected office for those who promote the language of rape or violence, like you. No, you. you How do, do you that. respond I to that? I don't promote the language of rape and violence. I make jokes. Do you agree You're with that? You're the ones decontextualising this. And no, that's tyrannical. Imagine the, fe the hurt feelings of anyone dictating who can and can't stand for election. I mean, if that's the case, then Jess Phillips has got no legitimacy as being an MP because of my hurt feelings from what she did to Philip Davies. And you're you don't want to talk about that, though, do you? Well, you're referring to the backbench business yes. committee Where she laughed at the idea the of House tabling of a, a discussion about men's issues. That's not funny. That's you're laughing. inaccurate. No, That's you're, inaccurate. No, it's not. I've watched that video a number of well, times. Well, you've lied about a lot of things today, so I don't take your word for it. I've Let made lots of videos. Let me tell our what happened. How about I tell your audience what happened? Let me tell our audience what happened. Backbench Business Committee meeting in the House of Commons where Conservative MP Philip Davis mm. says women have International Women's Day and in the Commons... They have women and equality questions every mm. month, he says, which they don't have for men. And he goes on to say, the opportunity for men to raise issues that are important to them are very limited. Mm. At which point you can hear Jess Phillips laughing. Yes. Philip Davis goes on, just to give you a flavour of the type of things men care about on International Men's Day. Then he pauses and he says, I'm not entirely sure why it's so humorous. And then he lists various male issues, including yes. men's life expectancy and male suicide. Yes. And he addresses Jess Phillips laughing before listing those issues. Later she says, you'll have to excuse me for laughing that the idea that men don't have the opportunity to ask questions in this place is frankly a laughable thing. As the only woman on this committee, it seems like every day is International Men's Day. Yeah, but that's her feminist bias. She blocked it. That's why it wasn't talked about. So her saying, well, he's a man, he can talk about it in any way he wants. Not if she's blocking it. And her demand on him, she wants 50% representation in Parliament. That's an unreasonable demand. Philip Davies doesn't get to choose that. So when do we have the debate on male suicide? It's the number one killer of men under 45. My uncle committed suicide. When do we get to have that debate? Thank you very much for talking to Never. us today. That's the point. We've covered it a number of times on this program. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you. Thanks for your comments.
Claire says, uh, this Carl Benjamin interview on your program today has made me cry. He sounds just like my rapist, making people believe that it's all a joke and that women are hysterical. Um, Carl says, how can UKIP allow an individual to stand for them after him using the word rape and claim it was a joke? It's disgusting. Uh, John says, uh, Victoria, you're one thick woman. Imagine having a conversation with you and you can't understand context. Geraint, on email, Carl Benjamin is right not to apologise for his joke. Why? Because there's no point, as he knows his apology will not be accepted and his joke will still be used against him by his political opponents, which include the supposedly impartial BBC. Uh, Royston says, uh, I love you for confronting the creature that is Carl Benjamin. I'm a male survivor of years of violent rape. Thank you, Victoria. Peter, on Facebook, uh, I will never vote for UKIP again. Carl Benjamin talking to us in an interview recorded uh, just before we came on air. By the way, in the interview, he gave one answer in which he pointed out that several comedians have made jokes about sexual assault, which is true in some cases. We took that short bit out because we couldn't find evidence that all of the people he named have done that. If you want to get in touch to talk about that interview, all the family courts, many of you still are. We will read some more before the end of the programme. Send us an email, victoria at bbc.co.uk. You can use the hashtag VictoriaLive.